Let's learn how to work with store procedures in ASP.NET Core. We'll start creating the application in ASP.NET Core 2.2. We will create it from the API template, although what we will learn in this video also applies to web application or resource pages and MVC. When we create our project, a controller called Values Controller is created for us. We'll work with this controller. Through this controller is that we will interact with our database using ADA.NET. The idea is that we will have a table in our database and we want to be able to read and insert data in that table using ADA.NET. We'll start by creating a model which will represent the information of said table. We are going to create a class called value in a folder called models. We see that the value class has three properties, ID, value one and value two. Also, we are going to create another class in which we will place the logic of interaction with our database. I'll create a class in a folder called data. The name of the class will be values repository. As we can see, our class has methods to obtain all the values, obtain a value by its ID, insert new values, and delete a value. When we talk about values, we mean registries in the database table. In addition, we are returning tasks in each function. This because we will use asynchronous programming to communicate with the database, as it is good practice in web development. We will use dependency injection to inject this class into the values controller. Let's head to the startup class, to the configure service method, and place the following line. We are not using an interface just to keep the tutorial focus on what interests us. Let's now work with our value controller class. We see that each action uses the repository injected by the constructor. Again, we're keeping the code simple and focused on purpose. In production code, you may want to place some try catches and validations in these actions. We are going to create a database with a table with which we will work. In SQL Server, we will use a script to create a database. If you already have a database, you do not have to do this. This same script is found in the description of the video. After running the script, we will see that we have a table created and store procedures with which we will work. Let's go back to Visual Studio and place our connection string in the app settings.json. Notice that we place it inside the connection string property and we gave it a name of default connection. Let's go to the values repository now. The first thing we will do is obtain the connection string using dependency injection. Let's implement the getAll function, which will allow us to obtain all the records of the database. Since this store procedure returns a result, we will use a data reader. Here we will use SQL connection with a SQL command to execute the store procedure, get all values. We open the connection and finally use the execute data reader async function to read the results of our store procedure. And finally we have this function to convert our SQL data reader into our value model. Now let's implement the function get by ID. As we can see, the only difference between this code and the previous one is the use of this line, which is used to send parameters to our store procedure. This is also useful to send parameters to our query to make filters. Now we are going to implement our insert function, which is used to insert a new value in the database. Here we do not use execute data reader because we do not intend to read data, but we want to perform an operation. That's why we use execute non query async. Notice also that we pass two parameters to the store procedure, value one and value two. Finally, we can also implement the delete by ID function. We see that this code is quite like the insert function, though here we only pass an integer ID as a parameter, which helps us to filter by the database record that we want to eliminate. Now let's make a small test to see that this works. Let's run our application by pressing this button. As we can see, an empty array is returned to us. This is because our table is empty. So let's go to Postman to create some records. We will take this URL here and use it in Postman. We are going to make a get request on the URL that we had in Google Chrome and we'll see that we get, in response, again, an empty array. Now let's do a post to our web API to create a record. In the body, we will use JSON and we will place value one and value two which are the properties of our value class. We press send and we receive a 200 OK. Now let's go to our other tab and if we make another get request, 
we'll see that we get the record that we just created. We can go back here and create another record. And if we do another get, we see that both records are returned to us. If we search for a record by its ID, we see that only this record is returned to us.